In this video, we're gonna take a look at a green ink by Noodler's Texas Live Oak. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description below is a link to the green ink playlist if you'd prefer to look at some different green inks. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample, 90 GSM Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading like the K in oak is a bit darker, the E in live is a bit darker. Extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade, quick goes darker to lighter to darker, brown goes dark to light, five seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, it shades, brown goes darker to lighter, fox goes dark to light to dark, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show good color variation and we are getting it. In the smear test, you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then, a pilot vanishing point with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. Now, it is bleeding in quite heavily at the scrubby, which in itself isn't a big deal. It does have a little bit of ghosting, not too bad. Uh, I wouldn't use the back of the page uh, based on what I know it's going to look like with just something behind it. Okay, but it's really not bad ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, and we're not getting it. In the smear test, you couldn't recover it if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And the most noticeable thing is how little this ink actually travels up the paper. And it really slowed the water's travel down as well. Now the one on the right is allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it's dunked into water. And it really did bond with that paper very immediately. And we can expect a little bit of resistance here. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. This is where we start to see some things that are a little alarming here. Now, these are not bleed spots that have come through, but these are bleed spots that are going very deep into the paper, showing how aggressive this particular ink can be. It didn't come through, it didn't touch the back of the page. It might stop you from using the back of the paper though. That's up to you. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer a little bit of shading, like live starts darker, gets lighter, gets darker. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, little bits of shading, brown goes darker to lighter. Fox goes darker to a little lighter to much darker. Five seconds to dry, it shows you how aggressive to dry it is. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, some shading, fox goes dark to light to dark. Jumps is a nice mid-tone all the way through where the is very dark. Eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both does show some color variation and we do get some. In the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it laughed at being reactivated. It had no effect at all, making it very safe to use in a note-taking situation if you need to go back and highlight. Water, it laughed at. It had no effect whatsoever. Really bonded with the paper. Pen flush started to move a little bit of the ink, really just pushing it into the sides around, but not doing a whole lot. Now, it did want to hold on to my converter just a little bit, and it took a little bit of effort with the pen flush to get it completely out of the converter. Not a problem getting this out of the pen itself. 
The one third bleach solution is starting to break it down, lighten it up, but not getting it off the page. The next writing sample is done on monocoque paper. We do get some bleed spots, not too bad, not touching the page underneath, a lot of ghosting, enough ghosting to probably stop you from using the back of the page. The 1.1, we have feathering in Texas, in oak, light feathering, really tiny, no halo, no sheen, it does shade some, it feathers in its darkest spaces, like the K in oak, the E in live, the XAS of Texas, the S in noodlers. Wherever it's a little darker, it feathers. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. It does have feathering. If you look at the cross of the T in the, you look at the K in quick, you look at the L in lazy, there's tiny feathering there. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. It also has little bits of feathering that occur, like the E in the, the K in quick, the Z in lazy. No spread, no halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. Scrubby for both do show a little bit of color variation, but it's really not showing through in the writing. But the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5 and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Texas Live Oak has a viscosity of 2.29, making it normal. If you're interested in how all of that viscosity stuff is done, then there's a link to that video in the description down below. The next writing sample is done on Loistrom 1917 paper. We do see a little bit of bleed spots that are starting to occur here at the scrubby, not such a big deal. The ghosting is not bad. I see it very faintly. I don't really see it coming through on the camera. The 1.1, feathers, a lot of feathers. All of Texas has feathers. The K in oak, feathers. The E in live, feathers. No halo, no sheen. There's shade where there's feathers. Anywhere it's darker, it feathers. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub. It feathers wherever it's a little darker, like the, like the L-A-Z of lazy, like the P in jumps. It spreads from an extra fine to about a fine. No halo, no sheen. Yes, it shades with feathering, four seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. Feathering in the same way. Feathering occurs where there's shading. The E in the, the end of the cross of the T in the, the K in quick, the B in brown, the X in fox. It spreads from a medium to about a broad with no halo sheen, the shading with feathering, six seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show very little color variation and it is here, but when it's here, it's got the feathering and the smear test, you could probably recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Texas Live Oak has an average dry time of 8 seconds, making this a very fast drying ink. The last writing sample is done on 28 pound premium copy paper. We do get some bleed spots that are occurring here, not all the way through, not touching the back of the page, stopping you from using the back of this paper, but not ruining the next paper. The medium has minor feathering in Texas and in Noodlers, not so much in live or oak. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter, just a tad lighter than the medium. No feathering. It does spread just a little bit to about a fine with no halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Texas Live Oak, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a nice purple with this green, and I went with Diatramentus Thomas Edison's Black Red. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Texas Live Oak by Noodlers? My major issue with this ink is how aggressive it can be. 
That, for me, is really a concern for excessive bleed and ghosting. I see it taking me a long time to be able to use up this bottle. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? We need to rein in some of the aggressiveness that it can have by using really a dry fine or extra fine pen. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at Sailor's Kin Mokusei, an orange ink.